Hello everyone, back to the Evermore YouTube channel. It's Chris back with another Rumour Has It video where we look at Newcastle United and the players linked to us. The window isn't open yet, but there's still loads of players being linked to us, especially with the World Cup being on right now. Plenty of players on display and uh, we're going to have a little look at one in just a second before we do a little bit of housekeeping. If you haven't already, please click the like and subscribe button. We'd love you to come and join us. We're on 2,080 is it 80 subscribers now, I think it is, or 80-something subscribers. So if I've had a few more, you click the button. Really appreciate that. We're aiming for 2,100, so help us get us there if you can. It'd be absolutely brilliant. Another milestone for us. All free content here, just pop up videos like this and normally two free podcasts that we do weekly, Mondays and Wednesdays. So let's get stuck into this other player then. This is a player who's actually playing at the World Cup right now, and it's a midfielder, so we're going to have a look at this. Again, I can't stress, this is not an ITK channel. We don't make up stuff just for the crack and just for the views. This is just us reporting on players linked in the media our stat man, Mark, smashes it up into his super duper computer and comes up with one of these brilliant stat slides. And then we just tell you what we think about it. So this is the lad we're talking about right now. And it is Adrian Rabio, who is a French international, 27 years old, plays for Juventus, very talented footballer, no doubt about that, box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, is at the World Cup at the minute, is doing well with France. France looked very good. They're obviously through to the last 16. A uh, good chance they could bump into England pretty soon as well. So I'm sure plenty of us will be watching, watching out for, for Rabio. Um, in terms of how he is as a player and what he's like as a player, so he's a central midfielder, he's box-to-box, left-footed. He can be deployed in, in the wide positions as well, but he does most of his work through the middle. He's very good at winning the ball back. He's he's pretty decent at that. He breaks the play well. He's got a great range of passing on him. Very box-to-box, -box, quick, strong, uh, good in the air as well, gets on the end of things. Um, has played for some huge clubs, as you can see in his career there. So he started at PSG. Um, stayed there for a really long time. You know, he had 215 appearances, 22 goals and 16 assists. And then it all went a little bit tits up for him at um, Paris Saint-Germain, which is exactly why I think this is probably a little bit of agent mischief and paper talk here. So so Ravio, um, his agent is his mother and uh, his mother has uh, not been short of controversy, even waiting for uh, Lauren Blanc in a car park a la Jose Mourinho style because she was disgusted that her son was dropped from the squad. Um, and Rabio has been uh, has been described, I think, as a little bit of a prima donna um, over the over the years in terms of uh, some of the fallouts that he's had and, and everything else. Um, and it, it's not the kind of player that we would normally be linked to, to be honest with you. When you hear about it, when you hear about these kind of players, um, yeah, the image of a spoiled child is is how somebody described him uh, once upon a time. Um, you know, bad attitude, um, lack of professionalism. It's not really good at all, to be honest with you. That that's not the kind of player that we really want in the squad. You know, we all know about the uh, the no dickhead policy. PK's even got the T-shirt to prove it right now. Um, but yeah, that's not really the kind of player that, that I suppose Eddie Howe would want to work with. We will have a look at the stats anyway, because you never know. Um, you know, Eddie Howe might be able to turn the player around. Yeah, but just just looking at some of the comments about him as well. So you know, some of some of the the things that have been said about him is that he's a polarizing player. Um, you know, he's tall, he's elegant. You know, he's got great skill, finesse, good ball control and everything else. Doesn't score enough goals. Um, it doesn't really create a great deal of assists. Um, but I think someone's uh, someone's saying here that, uh, yeah, I think Xavi's a fan as well of, of the player. But, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's one of those, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a big player. I mean, this is the third Juventus player that we've been linked to now um, in, in the kind of last couple of weeks, Juventus are in a lot of trouble. You can see the board have walked out. There's, there's, there's talk about financial turmoil. Um, so I think this just stinks of age of trying to haul their players out, try and get try and get a good deal. But you can see there some of the statistics that's come up about Rabio. You can see there, obviously, in his passing. This is, um, you know, against the, the top um, five European leagues of players in his position. You know, his passing isn't great. He's kind of in the 36th percentile. His pass completion, he's in the 60th percentile. So 83% of his passes... Uh, are on target, you know, in terms of pro progressive passing, he's just under three a game. You know, assists, he's again, he's in the 58 percentile. Uh, shots, he's in the 53 percentile. Goals, you can see there, he's got 0.14 per 90 minutes, so he's in the 76th percentile. In terms of his goals this season and his assists, he's actually played 11 Serie A games. He's got three goals and two assists, one yellow card. And he's played five Champions League games, two goals. So all in all, he's got 16 appearances, five goals and two assists. So it's not too bad for, for a midfield if you look at it that way. You know, his tackles, he does he does win the ball back very well. Like I say, he's a big, tall, strong player. He's, he's quite good in the challenge. 
Um, you know, his teams have really good positional sense as well. Good for the blocks there and very, very good in the air, as you can see. And you can see from the heat map there that Markston as well, um, <clears throat> you know, he is, he is box to box. He's all over. He drops deep, wins the ball. He can pull out wide. He can he can start the play. He can break up the play. You know, he can, he can stop an attack. So, you know, he is a talented footballer and his key skills there, dribbling, tackling and aerial duels in the main is, is is his kind of his main skills. You can see how he compares on the on the radar grid there to uh, to Joe Linton, the best midfielder in the world. Uh, sorry, second best midfielder next to Bruno. Um, we can see there, you know, in terms of of Rabiot to Joe Linton. Joe Linton does beat Rabiot in quite a few of the of the statistics there. Um, you know, but Rabiot does kind of just just pop ahead of him on some of the passes and the pass completions. But you know, I mean, Joe Linton's younger and he's got a better attitude. I'm not really sure Rabiot would be a good signing for us. But let us know what you guys think in the comments below, whether you think Rabiot would be a good signing for us. We shouldn't really turn our nose about it. But that's one player potentially coming in, one player going out potentially. And I think there's going to be a few more of these um, as, as time goes by, is uh, our very own Ryan Fraser. So Ryan Fraser, apparently, um, we are going to listen to offers for Ryan Fraser in the January transfer window. I did think this was going to happen. I thought some of these players would move on to create space in the squad. You know, for players that we can sign in January, obviously the Madison links don't go away, the Arby links don't go away. We need to free up space. So the likes of Fraser, as well as Lascelles and Richie, might very well make way for squad room for for these players. But Ryan Fraser is a funny one, and um, no doubt, I think he's got ability. He's only 28 years old, I think, as well. So he should be the peak of his powers. And um, very injury prone over the years, made a glass uh, when fit and when firing. Decent player, works hard, seems like a great lad and all great character. But, you know, I'm just looking at some of his statistics here. So he's been at Newcastle for three seasons and he's had 59 matches. Uh, he's played all, 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 all in all, 35 starts. Um, he's only scored three goals and got five assists. So it's not particularly great, you know, and there's no radar grid here, but just looking at some of the statistics there, you know, you're looking at his pass completion, he's down at 69%. So for wingers, he's in the 11th percentile. If you compare it to where Rabio just was there, and obviously if you compare it to like some Miggy and Maxi and you know Bruno and, and and Joe and these kind of guys, even Joe Willock, you know, he's he's way, way behind. Uh, in terms of his his kind of um his assists as well, um 0.12 per 90 minutes, he's down the 14 percentile. So he's just he's not doing enough for me as as a player. Um he's only really played, I think the longest spell he had for us playing games was 27 matches played in the 21 stroke 22 season, obviously with the great escape under Reddy Howe. You know, we got we got two goals and three assists in there. So most of his assists has come under Eddie Howe coming in. You know, yes, he was Bruce and he had a spell under Bruce. And, you know, I think Bruce played him as a bloody number 10 or whatever the hell he played him as. But for me, Ryan Fraser just hasn't done enough. Um, and I think he's he's an, an expected casualty um, of what you would call the old guard. You know, listen, they've served as well. They've done well when we needed them. Um, but if you look at the likes of Wilson, obviously, you know, stepped up his game. Miggy stepped up his game. Um, Sean Longstaff stepped up his game. Joe has completely transformed his game. Kraft stepped up his game. A lot of these players were here when Bruce was here and, and they were Bruce. Um, but they've stepped up and they've gone to another level. As Mark said when we were talking about this before we came on, um, he's not sure Ryan Fraser has another level. Now, for me, we can upgrade on Ryan Fraser, no doubt in my mind at all. And I think we will do that, You know, whether it be uh, a Madison, whether it be a Diaby, whether it even be someone like a Jack Harrison from Leeds. There's better players out there than Ryan Fraser, in my opinion. Players who can play more games, who are a fit more readily available than Ryan Fraser is and can have more of an impact. So I think it's thanks for the time, Ryan. Thanks for what you've done. I think it's time to say goodbye. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below if I'm being a bit too harsh or not. But for me, Ryan Fraser hasn't done enough. Um, and I think it's time for him to move on, as well as a couple of other players, which I'm sure we'll cover in uh, in future rumor has it videos there so that's us all wrapped up for this guys we're gonna have another rumor has it video i'm pretty sure <laughs> very soon because we're getting linked to so many players uh in in the media at the minute it's just relentless really and uh, the window's not even open yet but as i mentioned at the start if this is the kind of thing you like smash that like subscribe button we'd love you to come and join us all free content this we don't charge anybody we just love to have a bit of crack about newcastle where it'll be popular videos like this the morning magpie or the two live shows that we have weekly so keep it ever more guys keep supporting that team we'll call united and we'll catch you later Cheers.